So I have these frogs. And sometimes they do my head in. They're loud, they're obnoxious. And you know, breeding frogs isn't for everyone. So what if you just wanted one frog? Not 10, not 15, not five, not three, but one. Well, I'm gonna show you how I turned this old cave wetter terrarium and turned it into a little hidden cave, this paludarium, this little hidden gem for just one tree frog. You see, there was lots to do. I had to get all the excess soil out. I had to strip out all the dead moss. Essentially start fresh, start clean. But I wasn't done. I had to get some sealant out because I wanted to add more cocoa fiber to the background. These were the things I needed today for this build, this rebuild, so to speak. Shh, I'll mix the crop. Ah, the fun part. The laborious part, the time consumptive part, but no doubt the decorative phase, which is the funnest part. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, this shit was mad therapeutic. I could do this shit full time. Now all I used here guys was just moss. Now the good thing about moss is that it doesn't actually need too much substrate to dig into. It essentially just grows from anything. So I'm plugging it into all these little holes, there's all these little nooks and cracks and crevices and it just needs regular misting and some light and that shit will flourish. This originally had a little glass cylinder glued into it, so I thought, well, perfect to add a couple stringy plants that will grow out with some time and some love, and I'm just gonna plug in some moss in there as well, just to make it look a little bit more green, a little bit more bushy, a little bit more natural. So we get to the point of the final touches and thank goodness because this took fucking ages. Now it's coming along nicely, I'm not going to lie. Just a few more holes to plug just to get to the point where I can mist it. Now misting is important just to get everything nice and settled in, especially the moss. Now because I already had everything set in, I didn't really think about getting the pebbles in, so it was actually quite awkward, but I did get them in there in the end. These are river stones, and they look epic and quite natural, and you'll see at the end here what I do with regards to adding a few more bits and bobs, like some large stones, some rocks that you would see, and like a ditch side cave, obviously water, very important, frogs, guys, frogs need water. Ah, uh, and duckweed. Now I know what you're thinking, the basic bitch guide to keeping frogs in captivity as pets. Well, it does add a touch, a very nice touch, as well as leaves and some other things. But we'll get there, we'll get there. Yoink. What, you didn't think a snail would be involved in the story? No, of course, I need cleanup crew, guys. I need cleanup crew. Anyway, I got the mist to set up, and it was kind of doing its job, but this effect was really cool. It was like a slow, dripping, water in a well type scenario, which was kind of what I was going for with the hidden terrarium, or hidden paludarium, or hidden cave. So, it's all ready to go. So let's get the cute little bastard in there. Like I said at the beginning, guys, one tree frog. Home for one, not 10, not 15. This is a whistling tree frog, or a brown tree frog. Now these guys are originally from Australia, and now they're naturalized in New Zealand. An incredible animal, but he needs to eat, so let's feed him. Now a frog actually has 180 degree of vision, meaning that it has all that peripheral vision to work with. Now as you can see, he's nocturnal, but he spots the fly, and he's gonna hunt the fly. He's hungry, but a little bit clumsy, but he gets the fly in the end, and he gets his belly full and this plump little plumpmeister is gonna live to see another day. Now I know that was a little bit dramatic, but let's get another angle of the sucker. Now this is a common blowfly, and that's what frogs eat, insects. Now as you can see, the frog is resting, and when he sees the fly, look at that, alert. He's keen, he's ready. Now let's see what happens here. Wow, look at that strike. That is fast, aggressive, a lot more on target. So, that's it. I'm inspired by nature. I kind of had the idea of a kind of like a water well by the side of the road where a single arboreal tree frog is living its life.
I want to make it as realistic as I can while providing still a pretty good and suitable environment for this tree frog. This epic little tree frog. This wasn't hard to make. And I'm still new to this. I'm still learning. And always have been. I've always had this weird fascination for frogs. Almost like an obsession. I just find them super, super fascinating. This is the brown whistling tree frog. A really cute and small tree frog that lives and thrives in most of New Zealand. It breeds all year round and it thrives in cold temperatures. I'm Max Scott, and I'm inspired by nature. I don't do this shit because I have to. I do this because I want to. There's a lot of fascinating life underwater. And I hope you appreciate it as much as I do.